Welcome back. Uh, when I left la last time, we, we were talking about how how we might take elements um, in the metals side, the periodic table stuff that you see here, mainly metals in group 1 and 2, so I'll call that M. And we took a look at how we could take elements from um, this side of the periodic table and combine them with elements on the non-metal side of the periodic table. So we had a so-called bonding between a metal and a non-metal and we called that bonding an ionic bonding and we saw how in an ionic bonding um, the metal and non-metal could really become good friends because the metal tends to want to lose electrons and it tends to give electrons and and the non-metal wants, wants to gain electrons so that it has a full outer shell so the metal gave uh, an electron to the non-metal, the, the sodium atom gave a, an electron to the chlorine atom and they both form ions and the positive and negative ions attracted each other and in that manner they bonded together forming an ionic bond. So I'd like now to take a look at uh, several more examples. The next example is um, going to involve a movement of two electrons. So. In the last video, we had movement of one electron. Next example involves movement of two electrons. So I'm going to pick my metal. My metal is going to be magnesium. And since magnesium is in group two, it has two valence electrons, which we will see shortly. So let's look at magnesium. Magnesium, as we see here, is element number 12. So it's got 12 protons and hence 12 electrons. So let's draw magnesium. Let's just write the electronic configuration up before we draw it. It's 2, 8. 2 and 8 gives me a 10. And so there are two left over for the valence shell. So I'll draw magnesium here. Magnesium. I'll represent the electrons as dots this time. So I have 2 for magnesium anyway. 8. And two in the outermost shell. So I'll put these two guys over here. And for my non-metal, I will pick chlorine. I beg your pardon. I will pick oxygen this time. So oxygen is over above the staircase here, so it, it is a non-metal. And oxygen, we note, is element number eight. So I will write oxygen has eight protons and hence eight electrons so the configuration would be two and that leaves six left over for the next level so oxygen O this is not that's not a circle it's O right there so this is my nucleus and in the first shell I'm gonna have two electrons in the second shell I'm going to have six electrons. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So magnesium meets oxygen, and magnesium says, hey, I'd like to get a full shell, but I don't really want to go into the trouble of gaining six electrons. So what I'll do is I want to give away two electrons, but who can I give it to? So magnesium asks, Oxygen, would you like two of my electrons? And oxygen counts as electrons in the outer shell, and he or she says, oh, I have six electrons, so hey, I need two more. Now, it would be easier for me to just get two more than to lose all these six electrons, so he's like, sure, why don't you give me your electrons? So magnesium goes and gives oxygen its two electrons. So what happens to magnesium? Well, now my magnesium kind of looks like that because it lost two electrons. So it's only got two here. And it's got eight here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So magnesium, remember, while, while all this is happening, magnesium still has 12 protons in its nucleus. It, it didn't change the number of protons, but now it only has 10 electrons. So it's got a net charge of 2 plus. 
because, well, let, let's just do this in detail. He's got 12 protons, but he's only got 10 electrons. So 12 plus and 10 minus gives me 2 plus left over. So he's got 2 plus. And we will write its configuration 2 comma 8 brackets 2 plus since it's got a 2 plus charge on it. Meanwhile, oxygen, so so I should emphasize that magnesium is now happy because it's got a full outer shell of 8 electrons. Meanwhile, oxygen to 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 had gained the 2 electrons from magnesium. Magnesium had given it 2 electrons. So now we count electrons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, look, oxygen also has a full outer shell. So oxygen is now happy, but since it's got two extra electrons, remember the protons didn't change, it still has eight protons, but two electrons, it's now got net negative charge of two minus, which I will write on top. And we can also indicate that in the electronic configuration to 8 because it's got 8 in the outer shell now and it's got a net charge of 2 minus. So we see that um, both magnesium and oxygen are perfectly happy with each other since the magnesium has a positive charge and the oxygen has a negative charge they attract each other uh, electrostatically and form an ionic bond. So we have magnesium coming together with chlorine to form an ionic bond. So that is how they bond. Let's take a look at the structure now. So for every magnesium atom Every magnesium atom gives up two electrons and every oxygen gains two electrons. So for every magnesium atom that gives up two electrons, it can only give both electrons to one oxygen. It won't do to just give it one because then oxygen still won't be happy. It's, uh, then in that case, it will only have seven, not eight. So for every magnesium atom, we need to have one oxygen atom in order for them to react. Hence the ratio between the magnesium ions and the chlorine ions are one to one just as in the case with the sodium chloride so as you might imagine they would form the same sort of um, ionic structure that we saw with sodium and chlorine so oh I, I, I beg pardon this should be oxygen not chlorine so the magnesium and oxygen would form the, the same sort of um, ionic lattice as, as was the case with sodium and chlorine so I'm going to get magnesium alternating magnesium and chlorine ions and oxygen ions I keep saying chlorine ions so these are oxygen ions 2 minus oxygen 2 minus oxygen 2 minus magnesium 2 plus so this just goes on for quite a while and again, it's kind of it could form a three-dimensional structure. So we get a, a solid of magnesium oxide. So a solid ionic lattice of magnesium. So in symbol form, we would write it as magnesium oxide MgO um, because for every magnesium we have one oxygen. So that is the bonding between magnesium and oxygen. Let's look at another example. In this example, I will keep my metal the same. I'm still going to use magnesium. So magnesium, let's prepare magnesium. We have magnesium element number 12, hence electronic configuration 2, 8, 2. 2 plus 8 plus 2 gives me 12. Now, this time, uh, I'll have magnesium here, 2, 8, and 
two. Now this time, I'm going to pick uh, something different for the non-metal. Instead of oxygen, I will pick chlorine. Chlorine is element number 17. So let's take a look at that. Chlorine, element number 17. So it has electronic configuration 2, comma 8. 2 and 8 gives me 10, so I have 7 left over to make up the 17 electrons. So let's draw chlorine. It's got 2, 8, and 7. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now magnesium meets chlorine. Magnesium says, "Oh, wouldn't it be nice if I could just get rid of these two electrons? Then I'll be happy. Then I'll have electronic configuration two eight and a two plus charge. If only I could lose those two electrons." Now it meets chlorine, and chlorine saying, "Well, I don't know if I can take two, but..." I can definitely take one of your electrons, that would make me happy because if I had one extra electron, that would make my electronic configuration 288. Since I have an extra electron, I would have one minus charge. So magnesium says, all right, I will give you one of my electrons. So it transfers one of the elect electrons over the chlorine. So <clears throat> it's got one more electron to lose that it needs to get rid of. Well, chlorine says, I have a friend whose name is also chlorine who happens to want to take um, that other electron off of you so that he or she will be happy too. So this other chlorine comes along. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and takes that extra electron from magnesium. So magnesium says, "Cool." So now I've gotten rid of both my electrons, and I now have a configuration of two eight. And both of these chlorines now also have full shells of two eight eight with a net negative charge. So I have formed my magnesium ions Mg2+, and I have my chlorine ions Cl- here. Now unlike the case uh, for sodium chloride or for magnesium oxide, I now have one metal. For every metal, there are two nonmetals. So the ratio of magnesium to chlorine is now 1 to 2 because for every magnesium that wants to give up two electrons I need two chlorines to receive the two electrons that magnesium wants to give up so we have a ratio of 1 to 2 and sometimes you will see this written MgCl2 the little 2 at the bottom of the chlorine indicates that for every magnesium, there are two chlorines in this ionic lattice of magnesium chloride. Now, I could have written a 1 here at the bottom of magnesium, but it turns out that that 1 is implicit. We only start writing numbers if I have two or more, so we just leave it as uh, MgCl2, the uh, just to indicate the ratios between magnesium and chlorine ions in the magnesium chloride lattice. So the structure of magnesium chloride would just be alternating, again, alternating plus and minus charges because um, these plus and minuses form an attraction, an electrostatic attraction, hence an ionic bond between them. So we have a large, gigantic three-dimensional structure, but this time, um, if I were to count up the number of magnesium ions in it, I would find that they would be half the number of chlorine ions because there are twice as many chlorine ions um, as there are magnesium ions. To conclude, let's take a look at some of the properties of ionic substances that arises um, from what we have seen now. Now, you should notice that the ionic bond 
ecumenism and chlorine is actually quite strong. So because of this strong bond, it takes a lot of energy to split them apart. So we see that ionic compounds tend to have high melting and boiling points because it takes a lot of energy to separate them. Moreover, once they're in a liquid state, they can conduct electricity because they're ions and when ions are flowing, they can conduct electricity. Don't worry if you're unfamiliar with this concept. We will look at this in further videos. And finally, the ionic compounds are soluble in water. Um, this whole notion of whether or not something is soluble in water um, is actually quite a big story on its own. So for now, I, I won't go into this, but I, I just want to mention that ionic compounds are tend to um, be soluble in water. So in the next video, we'll look at how we can combine nonmetals with uh, with each other. So a bond forming between a nonmetal and a non.